Hey, Christoph. Um, I added you, Olivia. Uh, anyone else? I'm trying to... Uh, Dennis? Sebastian. Sebastian Dennis? and Eric. Sebastian, Eric, Dennis as well. Uh, you will just listen, Dennis okay. and Oliver. Okay. So okay. Sebastian, hey. Eric will be the ones doing the presentation because okay. my internet is very... Okay. I, I invited every one of them. Please let me know if there is anyone missing. Yes, Sebastian. Perfect. We have already quite a bit of number of people joining. So, um, so it is being recorded. That's good. Dokan, please let me know if there is anything wrong with the recording because I want to make sure that we are recording. Yeah. Okay. That's good. No yeah, problem. multiplayer. So we are a little bit uh, like uh, probably talking with the people who are really serious about the hackathon. That's good. Um, I hope it will create a lot of uh, interesting um, opportunities. Let's wait for maybe one more minute. Um, in the meantime, uh, what I can say, especially gaming category, social, casual gaming, I think multiplayer will be really appreciated. So that's great. And for Pearson category as well, I think education on a school setting, again, a little bit, you are on a school, you are usually multi-user. The only question is, are you remote? Is it a remote education or is it a co-located education, right? Because some in some settings, you are having headsets with every in the same classroom with every student and teacher. In some settings, like during COVID times, for example, everyone is from uh, joining from at home, right? So both requires amazing photon uh, infrastructure. So we will see how this superpower will be used today. In the meantime, shall we uh, get to know each other while we are um, while we are uh, waiting for others? Who wants to start yes. first? Sounds great. So let, let me start. So I'm, I'm Chris, I'm the founder CTO at uh, Photon Engine. Um, I'm not in Hamburg in our headquarter. I'm I'm abroad and my internet is quite flaky. So I decided that um, my key engineers, Eric and Sebastian, will guide you through the uh, presentation. So um, I let them say a couple of words. Hello, so Sebastian, uh, as Chris said, uh, we'll start to explain you how to make multiplayer magic today. And uh, I work with Photon on uh, everything regarding uh, XR topics. Um, can you guys hear me? Sure. Uh, yes, so I'm Eric, um, client SDK lead. Uh, try to help the teams building the SDK themselves to go in the right direction. And I'll be here uh, and over the hackathon days to help the teams on choosing the right SDK and right approaches for what they're trying to do. Perfect. Other team members who want to introduce themselves? Well, I think we are good from the Photon side. We have a couple okay. of more colleagues in here to, to listen. So okay, we try perfect. to be on as many events personally as possible so maybe uh, so... maybe maybe we can a little bit uh, talk a little bit about that before starting because uh, people will listen to that so let's uh, maybe uh, share that in at some locations you will be in person but um, even though you are not in person you will be on discord for support right so just to let you uh, let everyone know that uh, photon will be at your service and they are really keen to listen to you, uh, your project, um, especially if you have a plan to create a multi-user, multiplayer app game, please uh, go to, uh, I mean, share with with, uh, with Photon team or with the local organizer team that you have a multiplayer game. So we will basically literally give that list of all the multi-user app teams to Photon. This means that they will have a special care package for you. 
okay they will be closely supporting and listening and supporting you okay just to let you know that because whenever you are distributed through the venue sometimes it's very hard to find which team is where uh, we just want to make sure that photon team is aware of your uh, where are you located as a team and what kind of multi-user you are planning to do so you are easily accessible by photon team and they will be also on the site so you can also reach out to them in the mentor room uh, they will be uh, they will be having a table there okay any uh, anything that before we start uh, the technical side of things we are quite crowded as you see there's a huge interest photon team so uh, and i'm pretty sure we will double the numbers uh, by people who are listening afterwards so that's good news that uh, photon team will not have so much free time at hackathon that's good um but uh, one important thing if you have any questions please 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 do not hesitate to uh, submit on the q a session uh sorry q a uh, tab under the uh, screen there's a QA tab so please uh, don't hesitate to use that tab okay um uh, you don't need to say anything now uh, zeng chen uh, in the event because now uh, we don't know which projects you are doing maybe your team is not set up yet but at the event at the location whenever you uh, finish the team formation just uh, clearly state that i'm having a this kind of a project i need uh, multiplayer team support okay so that you will be flagged as important to to support okay perfect great stage is yours eric and thanks again photon team for uh, supporting all these four destinations i hope that we will create a very nice impact at the end of the hackathon thank you um thanks Ferhan. i think um presentation will be done by sebastian but he's already sharing screen right sebastian yeah it's okay Okay, so I can start. So thank you. So uh, we already presented ourselves, but for the one who have joined recently, just so that you have the proper context. So I'm Sebastian from Photon. Uh, I work mostly on our XR uh, topics for supporting our customers and for the samples. And I will be at the London Hackathon. So with another colleague. So if you need any help there, don't hesitate to join us. And Eric is also here. Maybe you want to present yourself again, Eric. So, hi, I'm Eric, uh, SDK client, SDK lead at Photon. I'll be here to help you guys on choosing the right SDK, depending on what you do, but overall general advice on, on multiplayer approaches and tech. So feel free to reach out. We're also on the Discord uh, for the event. So I'll be doing this remotely, but that's, how I do support. Uh, Sebastian, you plan to talk about the circle access as well, right? So let... not yet, so you can explain it if you want. To... Yeah, so I think uh, there is a, so we have this premium support program called Circle and for the participants of the hackathon, this is available. Um, um, yeah, Chris, uh, is, is there a, an email that was sent so they can join via uh, that? that, that uh, uh, Circle gives post... you access. Go ahead. Yeah, we will post the info in the um, XR hack Discord soon. So yeah, all and, the and teams can sign up for free. Yeah, and and we'll be at the XR Hackathon Discord directly for initial questions and everything. But of course, feel free to join the the circle access we're giving for free during the event because there you have access to the full team of engineers who work directly and also see other discussions going on by. Uh, top-notch teams doing stuff, not only on XR, but also on, on gaming and industries in general. Uh, okay, Sebastian, yeah, it's all yours. So first, I will develop a bit who are we at Photon. So maybe you already know on M, but to give you context, we help studio making the best multiplayer games out there uh, with the best state of the state of the art uh, multiplayer technology. And you probably know a lot of these games, uh, Stable Guys, Breachers, uh, Lego Star Wars Battle, and so on. Uh, but here we are for your hackathon. And so not for a full-fledged game, but for something that we do in, in a limited time. But don't worry. 
because aside from doing the best state invert technology, one of our main focus is to make sure that we are helping you to make multiplayer simple. Multiplayer is a complex topic with that might be frightening for people trying to go alone on this topic. And that's why we are providing the best tools to make sure that it is totally at reach for your project. And clearly, we make sure that it is simple enough so that you will be able, if you want, uh, to undertake this kind of things uh, during an hackathon. Uh, and once the hackathon is finished, uh, you, you will be able to count on us to be with you in your incoming success. If you want to go further and start doing your full project uh, and release it, uh, we have already supported a, a large variety of virtual reality games, uh, wh which have uh, huge success. And uh, we have servers all around the world so that no matter where you are located and no matter where your players are located, we will be able to provide you the best results. Uh, we have hundreds of thousands of developers who have been uh, benefiting from this help from us, and soon you will be able to join the, this uh, multiplayer adventure. So regarding today, uh, we'll try to speak about how to work in this networking VR hackathon context in three parts. First, we will discuss the kind of architecture that you can find in a networking application. Uh, don't worry, we'll explain you in depth what exists, but it will stay simple. And then in the second part, we'll give you ways to quick start your application because we make sure to provide you samples for every kind of needs so that you will be able to uh, have something working very fast. And then, as we said before, we'll be able to help you on site, but even alone, you will be able to, to do nice things. And then to be sure that you have a good understanding of everything, we have taken the knowledge that we have put into this sample, and we have extracted a few things where we can go in depth here. Uh, but don't hesitate to ask questions uh, on Discord, but also on the chat here, so that if needed, we, we can uh, develop a bit. So first, what is when you are starting your application, the first thing you have to choose to be sure that you are going in the right direction is choosing the kind of architecture you want for our application, because there are some choices there. On our side, in Photon, we have several products uh, to ensure that your, that your ID will have the, the right solution for your needs. Um, every one of them is, on, is based on uh, real time. It's a battle-hardened uh, core that is used for all our products. Uh, you will see that in what I will described for you today, mostly we're speaking about Unity. But in fact, real-time can work on many targets. And for Unreal, our high-level stacks will be also uh, going to Unreal soon, and we already have preview. So clearly, it will be very simple for you if you start with Unity. But that's not something that will block you. And even if during the presentation, I will mostly focus on this target, uh, don't hesitate to dig a bit or to ask us questions if you want to go in some other direction. That's the kind of thing that where we can help to. So regarding the high-level solution that we have, the two high-level solutions that are most relevant for synchronization in a game and a, in an, a, an experience uh, are Quantum and Fusion. Uh, Fusion has also various modes. And with both of them, we you can kind of target many kind of application. And we develop this in the next slide so that we can help you choose the proper solution. So Fusion first, the free side of this square, are, is a state uh, synchronization solution. So we make sure that the object that you are using in the world have their state synchronized between each player. There's two ways to deal with that. First, we speak about centralized authority. So we have one authority that makes sure that the truth is the same from everybody. And you can ever do it with dedicated servers or with uh, between clients and themselves with one client doing this host part. But we also have other solutions. And we develop this a bit in the next slide, where you can use uh, a distributed authority where this state 
uh, does not have to go through one single person and things are maybe uh, simpler this way in some cases, uh, even with uh, even if with um, host uh, and centralized authority, you, you have other properties interesting. And quantum by itself is totally another beast because here we are simply synchronizing the inputs of a client. And since quantum has a deterministic core, so we can make sure that everyone replays the same things with the input, then just with the synchronization with the input, you have the same thing everywhere and the synchronization is done uh, almost transparently. And this way, sometimes we almost describe quantum as something with no net code because you simply focus on proper systems and inputs and then you don't have to go deep into the networking logic behind it. So in practice, how does it work? To help people who have the same kind of question than you have, uh, we have prepared what we call the quadrant. So in fact, it is the same organization of the various solutions we have, but with sample applications and some criteria to help you. So for instance, you can see that since um, Quantum has this very specific uh, logic, uh, you can do um, things around physics um, much more elaborated there. And so uh, if you have a sports game or physics brawler or things like that, that's the kind of solution that might be relevant for you. Uh, but the infusion, uh, when we see what we have, for instance, for many people who do social games or casual things, the shared topology is perfect. It's totally uh, uh, enough for this kind of usage and you can have it. But on the other side, if you want to have some competitive uh, first person shooter, we are often advertising uh, the dedicated server topology to be sure that people can have the best anti-cheating solutions. But if they don't care about this problem or if they want to have reduced cost because dedicated server introduce some cost, the host topology that uh, where the host is uh, on the client directly, make sure that things stay simple uh, and with reduced cost. But here we are speaking about virtual reality and augmented reality and so on. And so we try to make a specific version for today for, of the quadrant for virtual reality. And I'll try to make a, a few focus here and there to give you more ideas. As I said before, the shared topology is something very simple to learn and use and quite cost efficient. And again, for everything in the category of social application, uh, co-op games, uh, uh, this topology is clearly very nice and good enough for what you have. And also for people who might have started with uh, existing application or, um, you know, in virtual reality, when the, of the core issue is interaction stacks, if you have used non-networked interaction stack, you can go with uh, Fusion Shared and things will be quite natural with that. And we will see that afterwards, but we have sample to help you uh, start in this direction. Um, if you have, uh, if you want to go into the direction of competitive FPS, uh, things a bit more advanced, where you want to, to take the state of the art pattern that we have, for instance, we have lag compensation that is available in this category where you can make sure that when someone shoots, even with the lag, we can make sure that the shooter is is not uh, has no issue due to the lag and, and can be sure that when you shoot someone, it has been done properly, it has been confirmed properly, even for the remote host. Uh, we have also clearance and prediction where we can make quite magic things where we have rollback. And so, for instance, we have capabilities to make sure that we receive things properly while do not taking too much time because we can predict things a bit in advance. For these kind of things, uh, clearly uh, the host topology will be uh, very interesting. So if you go into this direction of competitive uh, games, or if you plan to have something that is local in LAN, uh, some arcades, uh, things like that, clearly you could go into the host direction. But if you want to have these advanced capabilities, but you, you don't want to have the additional cost and this kind of thing, uh, the client hosting, is something that is quite relevant for co-op games with advanced logic where you need client side prediction, rollback, and this kind of thing. Client hosting, client hosting is perfect for that. Um, and also, of course, like I said before, if you want to go into the direction of network physics, that's something where quantum 
shines a lot. You can do it with uh, fusion uh, too uh, in osteopathy and so on. But clearly, if you want to have advanced physics, uh, if you want to do sport games, things like that, uh, quantum will be a very good place to start with. And also keep in mind that quantum, since it's only synchronizing the input, not the state of things, you can do games with or application with a lot of objects that would need synchronization. For instance, if you do, if you want to do some two-air defense or real-time strategy or some advanced simulations where you have plenty of objects to synchronize, clearly the approach that Quantum is taking might be something very relevant for you. It also provides some train, some uh, replicabilities due to the determinism, and so you can also do it in training and things like that. It might be relevant. Keep in mind that if you, it is a bit too much for you, if you you have never done networking before, if you have some existing concept that you want to migrate, the fusion in shared topology will be something quite easy for you to start with. And I will develop it a bit in the sample that we have afterwards. Uh, I think we are quite a lot. So initially, we thought about asking some of you if you wanted to, uh, to tell us what kind of application you have and, uh, and suggest it for you. But since we are a lot, we have planned also as a fallback to go into a few uh, case study. And so we'll explain the logic about how to choose your topology. And don't hesitate on the channel and then on Discord to tell us, I'm lost. I'm not sure what kind of things I want to do, because I think that the thing that I want to do needs a bit additional power. What is the proper uh, topology for that? Don't hesitate to ask us, and we'll help you. And so for those uh, case studies, First, we'll take Breachers. I don't know if you know this game, but it is a competitive shooter when uh, uh, you breach into, uh, into a place uh, taken by terrorists and this kind of thing. So what kind of topology should we use for this kind of things? First, it is a first-person shooter, so where you want to have this kind of capabilities where you want the shooter to, to be satisfied to have to have a confirmed hit when it's someone, and so you don't want to care about uh, about lag and don't don't want to worry about this kind of things. So this is this kind of game, and also uh, clearly, if you want to have competitive game, if you don't want to have a cheating issue, and you still having this um, accuracy of the capabilities we provide in state of the art technologies. Clearly, it is a case where dedicated server is the way to go. You, you make sure that you have lag compensation with host topology. You make sure that with dedicated server hosting, you won't have to worry with uh, cheating and so on. And so clearly, this direction is the place to go for this kind of game. And it is one of the clients that we have here. Another solution on the other side. Let's take an, uh, so, um, a meeting and event application like Engage. So indeed, it's still a first, per first person. It's the kind of things where it is a more or less a meeting application, a metaverse application. And we expect to have a very, a various kind of uh, interaction when you might need to, to add very quickly some new interaction, not going through inputs and so on. Clearly shared is a good way to go uh, for this uh, kind of application. And as soon as we have this kind of social VR application, it is something that is interesting. Another case that you will see on the video, and we will speak about it a bit more later, is an application where you can have fun and do all kinds of physics things. So we made, a, we made this sample, Quantum Mixer, when you want to be able to grab things, to hit them somewhere, to be able to throw balls, to uh, punch things, and this kind of, uh, of capabilities, clearly, we are going into virtual reality, but we want to have advanced physics. So I can go a bit further, but we have punching balls, things like that. This kind of use cases, if you want to have this physics properly synchronized between players, it's a good way to go to quantum with its determinist uh, physics engine. And it is a very, very uh, relevant way to do this kind of integration in virtual reality. So first here, we have tried to go into the various topologies. And you will be able to discuss this kind of thing with us. Then 
at some point we have made a choice and you want to start with this uh, application. And for that, um, you will see that on our website, you will have everything to guide you and to explain uh, how to use these uh, tools and the SDK. Uh, but you will also see that on our website, we have a lot of samples to help you understand how to bring your ID to life. Uh, we put a lot of effort in, into these ones and uh, we want to be sure to guide you and also inspire you because you can see these samples to see what kind of things can be done to, uh, with networking and to show you then how to achieve it. Uh, and among these samples, we have a lot of them that are uh, aimed at uh, virtual reality. And so I, I pick a few ones uh, that might be relevant for the hackathon, uh, but feel free to wander on our website to see what we have. Uh, we have much more things. And since you will have a circle subscription, you will have additional things too uh, that will be uh, available for them. Most of them will be for the shared topology, as clearly it is relevant for many applications in virtual reality in a limited time, like the one you will have. But I will show you also where to find uh, things for the host topology or for quantum. So first on the website, you will find Fusion VR Shared. So this sample is very basic. You will have teleportation, grabbing, this kind of things. But the goal of this sample is mostly into his documentation to be to provide basic features, but to be sure that it is very easy for you to understand things in details. You can use it like it is. And we made a lot of more advanced sample using this base. But the goal of this tutorial page is mostly to be sure that you can understand everything into details. We will develop the logic a bit, a bit further into the presentation. But in fact, if you read this page, you will have all the basics to be sure to understand how you could make yourself a virtual reality application with networking. And it's not that difficult. And again, don't hesitate to use Vista to, this, to start something. Um, as I said, it is very basic with limited features. And so we have also another uh, sample uh, that is also available on the asset store, by the way. And this one has the same core, but we added a lot of things in it. Our focus here has to be sure that we were cross platform. So this sample is working both on the Quest, but also on the Vision Pro from Apple. And we have made sure that we show to you how to use voice because as I said before, we have several SDK and one of them is for you to enable you to speak between users. And we make sure that this sample demonstrates these uh, capabilities. And also in this sample, you will see how to do proper finger tracking because in the first one, it is very basic and we show you how to use controllers. But in this one, you will see how to do uh, finger trackings and we are including code so that your, uh, the finger tracking is quite optimized and compressed and doesn't use a lot of bandwidth. You can understand everything in it, but you can also simply take it and use it in, in your own code. Uh, it's also a showcase of the free add-ons that we provide. And in fact, you have this page where you can, in one download, take every free samples that we, every free add-on that we provide that allow people to do many kinds of things. So everything I cited before, but we have also a few add-ons that allow you to draw, or we have little magnets, things like that. Something that, some components that you can reuse to, to quickly draft some application. And what is interesting is that in these add-ons, everyone has de a demo scene. And also, of course, a dedicated documentation page. And so in this way, if you want to start something pretty fast, you can take this one, play a bit with the demo scene, see what is inspiring for you and play with it. Or of course, you can take the full-fledged uh, sample that I described before and see how it can play the intuition. But with this one, you will be able to understand everything and things will be quite simple for you to start with. Uh, if you want to see how these kind of things are made, and you can read it in the documentation, of course, but you, if you want to see the steps in details, we have made a speech before uh, where we, step by step, we are explaining how to go through the various stages of building an initial application. And so we have published on uh, our YouTube account two videos 
One, that is a bit boring, but is required to explain you how to set up an XR project. So it might be relevant for you to, to look at it if you want to understand the, how to install. If you have never played before with XR development, it might be interesting for you to see how to set up a virtual reality project. And the second part goes in depth into the various steps to build an application. And we have made some tools for this presentation where you can see both some little buttons to explain you the steps, but also you have a log view where you see each step that we have undertook with an expectation in Unity. And these uh, tools are also available in uh, the XR addons, so you can you can play with it. The idea is not to tell to you use it to build your application because you can start with the quick start sample, but if you want to understand things a bit more, it's quite interesting to, to see the, the steps to build an application. So these samples are uh, relevant for uh, the shared topology. And as I said, it is a very good one to start with virtual reality if you want to do gestual game, experience, social experiences, things like that. But as we saw in the, um, in the quadrant, there's also other needs that you might have. And so we have also quick start sample that you can use for that. So for instance, for the host topology, we have a VR host sample that you can use, where you will see how you can uh, do the same things, uh, more or less, that we are doing in the VR shared topology, but here with advanced capabilities that we can do with, um, with host topology. So for instance, you will have to have client-side prediction and so on. It will allow you to do some things like thick grabbing and, um, and to have quite neat interaction. Keep in mind, though, that, of course, the physics engine from Unity is not made for, um, um, for multiplayer and for networking. So it's working pretty well in this sample. But keep in mind that for advanced physics, you should probably go to Quantum. But for basic needs, it will be quite relevant here. And again, in this page, you will have detailed explanation about the logic and the core and how it works. It doesn't demonstrate uh, lag compensation, but you will have plenty of other uh, tools on our site and samples explaining it. We even have a virtual reality sample called Dragon Hunter VR that explains both virtual reality and uh, lag compensation. And it will be very soon updated to use the same core as this sample. So for now, it has an over architecture. It might be interesting like that. But soon it will use the same core, so things will be more similar for you to, to, to imitate uh, if you want. And if you want to go into uh, Quantum and use uh, its capabilities, for instance, for physics, you will be able to use this uh, last sample uh, that I show here uh, that explains to you how to punch things, uh, how to launch a basketball, how to do tractors, beams uh, with objects, and these kind of things. And what is interesting to have in mind is that you can very quickly do a sandbox game with this uh, sample because, in fact, if you simply play with the basic uh, quantum components for physics, you will be able to add your own game, your capabilities, and play a bit with that. Don't hesitate if you want to go into this direction to ask more about this uh, to us, and we can guide you to the kind of thing you, you, you can create with uh, this. Uh, so first, we say it is important to choose your uh, proper architecture, your proper topology for your application based on its needs. And we will be able to help you on that. Here we have told you, in fact, once you, if you want to test or if you know already on what kind of topology you want to go, you have the basis to, to work on it. But probably it would be interesting for you to, to go a bit deeper into the understanding of how things are working. So from this sample, I have extracted a few concepts in the following slides to be able to, to develop a bit more the core logic that uh, is uh, relevant for virtual reality application. So first, what is an immersive application? Uh, here I'm going to the ground again. Uh, the idea is to be able to collect the user device input, so the figure tracking, the controller tracking, the head position, the local, the, the local position relatively to the rig, this kind of uh, things. Then you want to share it over the network. And finally, you want to display it to other people. In every sample that I described, the logic that we have here, it's 
one kind of architecture, but you, you can do other things, but it's a very simple one. The idea that we have is to have a hardware rig, a local representation of the user. When we collect the hardware inputs, the end position, end position, this kind of things. And then we have network representation of the user, the, the same network rig with the end, the head, the rig position, this kind of thing. And for the local user, his, uh, their network rig will follow the hardware rig. And that's what you will see in the sample that uh, I described you before. You will see in the scene one hardware rig, and when you spawn, you will have your own network rig, but also the network rig of every other players. And since with uh, uh, our SDK, we are synchronizing the position of your network ring, then the other people will receive it. So in practice, it will look a bit like that. For every user locally, you will have your hardware rig and several network rigs, including one that follows your user. So don't be surprised. When you look at the scene, you will see always, of, always when you are not playing the application, your hardware rig. And then when you spawn, you have your rig network rig spawning, and then the one for the other player. And this over networking is simply moving because it is, it is you look, following locally the hardware position of uh, the player. So it's a very simple architecture, but once you have understood this, things are pretty simple because in fact, in our uh, SDK, we have components that make, that make sure that your position is synchronized properly. And so you don't have to worry about many things. It will work quite transparently. To go a bit further even more, I will develop a few things. So first, I explained to you that we have components that allow you to make sure that everything is smooth. Why I am speaking about that, you have just to think about one thing, and then you will be able to forget it quite quickly, that in fact, you know, in virtual reality, we are refreshing the headset very often, but the network synchronization can can't go at the same speed, uh, or network connections are, are not fast enough globally. And so that's why it is important in a network application to be able to create intermediary data between the information that we receive from the network. So for instance, Fusion is a tick-based engine, but to be able to render at proper speed, don't worry about the, the tick rate of uh, Fusion on the network. It will be smooth because there is interpolation. And so you have to make sure that if you want to rebuild things yourself, you have to take into account when you are doing multiplayer, it has to exist this way. But in case of our application, you don't have to worry about this because outside of very specific needs, uh, we have, for instance, for Fusion, we have Network Transform, a component that automatically synchronizes the position. And even if you want to synchronize the velocities, we have a physics add-on that provides the same thing that synchronizes and interpolates the speed of the object. And even for figure tracking, as I told you, we have an add-on that makes sure that even if you send two very distinct positions of the end, the various steps in between are synchronized properly. And so if you want to do your own kind of advanced capabilities, for instance, if you want to have some color to go from one to any other, but to have something quite smooth, you will have to do this kind of interpolation yourself. But with uh, Fusion, for instance, it's something very, very easy to do. So even if you want to do this kind of thing yourself, we can explain it to you, and it's very simple. And if you have just position manipulation, you don't have to care. We have the components for here uh, for you to, to make things uh, quite uh, transparent. In virtual reality, you have something else to think about. And again, it is something that is explained to the samples, but you have to, to keep it in mind if you want to do some tricky things locally. In virtual reality, user will expect to have very reactive and movement. Uh, the interpolation I described it to you introduce a very, very small delay, but in virtual reality, you can feel it. And so one pattern that is very important to have in mind when you are doing virtual reality application is extrapolation. And in fact, it's just that even if remotely the user will see you just a tiny bit in the past, locally we make sure to always display the hardware position of the end. And the two things can coexist very simply in Fusion because we simply separate the two topics when we synchronize the things on the network and when you extrapolate and when we render things. And the good news for you is if your only issue on that is about end, in the sample I showed I showed to you before, you have 
everything set up already, you don't have to think about that. But it is very simple, very simple to understand. And maybe at some point you will do some crazy and creative things. That's why I'm explaining it to you here. And you can also look into the detailed samples, like they are shared to have a full in-depth explanation about this kind of magic. So I'm mostly picking it to you here so that you have it in mind. And then you can look at the documentation only if you need this kind of advanced capabilities. Another thing to have in mind, if you, here it is mostly if you want to do physics application. Uh, in host topology or in um, or in uh, quantum, in both both cases it is relevant. In virtual reality, you have something quite strange for a game or for an application. You are driven by your real life ends, and so you can go through everything. <laughs> and since you can go through everything, if you want the object you grab to be blocked by the environment because they are physics, it's quite problematic. So, in the samples you will see that what we use to go around this kind of issue is what we are calling pseudo-optic feedback. It's a research topic that simply explains that if you are doing this kind of experiment, you can make sure that if you simply display a ghost end at your real life position and give a bit of vibration, people will have the impression to feel the resistance. And so you can make sure that on the network, everything goes smoothly. But we have also samples like Fusion Host, VR Host, and uh, Quantum Mixer that explain in details if you want to have something locally that stay coherent between uh, what we want to see on the network and what the person feels locally. We have some explanation here to give to explain to you how to do this magic. And of course, again, if you use the samples, you don't have to worry about this. It is already available. This kind of little tricks might be a bit testing if you want to do fix. Uh, also, another tips, uh, if you are starting to do uh, networking and uh, XR, if you are using IR foundation or things like that to detect surfaces, keep in mind that it won't be the same at every DVD house. It is obvious to say it, but it's quite hard to forget, oh, no. Okay, if I'm trying to punch a table here or to detect a wall to put something on it, over, for other people, it is not the same place. So in your experience, you should find a way, ever, ever it is okay and it doesn't matter a lot, but if it's problematic for people, you have to find at the start of your experience to uh, find a good way to have a reference position. So to be able, we have experiments where you can see that uh, uh, we put on purpose, we detect the wall and we relocate the experience behind the wall so that people are behind the window in our wall. Or we, you can make sure that at the start of your application, you detect, you select a, a wall or reference point to be sure that you are with common point, common common reference point. And I'm speaking about this when you are far from uh, other people. But of course, as we said during the, as at, uh, it has been said during the introduction, there is also tools existing uh, for Meta, notably to have shared encores if you have. Uh, a shared experience between someone uh, with someone locally. Just one little tip that is not totally uh, about multiplayer regarding the user localization. I, I spoke to you about teleporting and this kind of things before. Uh, teleporting in augmented an augmented reality experience is quite confusing because you don't feel that you are moving because it, you see the real life around you. And so if you want to do this kind of quick moving uh, into an application, you have to find other ways to make people feel it. Uh, for an uh, uh, Sebastian, sorry to interrupt. Because you were talking about haptic feedback, I have a good question here I don't have an answer for. So yeah, sure. if you're using hand tracking and not controller, you cannot use vibration. Do you have a suggestion for how to do haptic feedback? It's a very, very good question because indeed okay. that's the major issue with finger tracking and uh, and this capability to give uh, user feeling. The good point is that since you have you are using finger tracking, you will have already some in-depth physics, in-depth sensitive experience because you will be able to use a finger. But clearly today it's quite in fact, it is sometimes less powerful to use finger tracking due to that, because you don't have the feedback. And so clearly, I expect on the longer run, device provider to add 
rings, watch, whatever uh, for that. Mm -hmm. To be honest, there is some research topic on that. We, you can, we can do this kind of cheating with the brain just with visual effect. For instance, uh, some research team make you feel that you are aiming right in front of you while in fact touching your hand. And so your hand gives feedback because you are pressing on it. There is some research about that, but clearly finger tracking removes something here. And you have to choose a bit. Uh, if you want to have very nice physics things, I would still stay on uh, controllers, but it's a very interesting topic. And we are we were speaking about the mixed reality uh, pen from Logitech a bit before. It is a case where you will be able to use your hand while grabbing an, an object that is not really a controller, so you will be able to map things a bit more to what you are used while still having haptic feedback. So it is interesting. But clearly, you have to make a choice here. Either you have the nice finger tracking things, uh, or you will have to 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 go into something a bit less relevant. Uh, that was it. Uh, for this kind of question, because here we are speaking about um, networking, but in fact, when you are doing networking, most of the time, you will have issue with virtual reality because you will push it to, to its more personal and sensitive effect because you will be with someone else. And so don't hesitate to have this discussion with us on the Discord or during the event. It will be a pleasure to develop this kind of things with you. For instance, even if during a, an hackathon you might not be thinking about this kind of things, there, there are very important social things that you can you should think. For instance, in a virtual reality experience, if you teleport next to someone, it will be very aggressive. And so in a real life application, or if you want to focus on this kind of things in your uh, in your experience, it's very simple to say, no, we can't teleport close to someone. And every kind of culture and region has a various radius of social uh, intimacy that they want to respect when you move and teleport. And it's very, very interesting because when you walk, people will be able to make you feel that you they don't want you to come, but when you teleport, you have issue. So for social, psycho, um, physiological, other things like that, don't hesitate to discuss with us. It will be a pleasure. We are not limited to explain to you things about network. Uh, it will be a pleasure to discuss these topics too. Um, one topic that is about network is bandwidth. In the hackathon, you probably won't have issue in normal use case, moving objects and so on. You don't have to worry about that. But if you go into specific direction like drawing, like uh, transmitting simulation data and these kind of things, you have to make sure that you, you, you only transfer what is relevant because uh, it can block people that have a slow connection. And also for real life use cases, it will create some cost that you might not want. Uh, so don't hesitate to share only relevant data and compress them when it is possible. For instance, for figure tracking, you know, figure tracking, we have a lot of bones in your hands where we can rotate for the phalanx. And so we had made sure on our side to compress a lot, something around 90%, uh, the amount of data that, that we want to share for that. And if you use what we have done, it's perfect. You will have mostly everything nice from the scratch. But if you start to go crazy and transmit a large chunk of data, for the hackathon, it will be fine. But later on, don't hesitate to discuss with us to be able to make sure that you transmit the right amount of data so that everything works fine for you. And also for some data, you don't have to refresh all the time things. The interpolation we are speaking of, you can use it on longer range and to make sure that you only transmit at the proper rate, at the proper moment, what you need to transfer. So probably it is not something that most of you will face here, but don't hesitate to think a bit about, about that. Uh, just quickly, we have still a bit of time, yes. I will go quickly through this and then we can come back and Maybe if some people have questions, we can develop a bit. But just if you go for fusion in shared topology, a few basic tips, uh, mostly for people who want to do social experience and these kind of things. Uh, you will see that we have a component called network object that is used to represent an object that can be uh, synchronized in space. We often add a network transform with it to be able to move them and so on. Just in social experience, 
you probably want to take object and then someone else want to take it in shared topology you want to be sure to have the right to take the object and it's not the default setting so just keep in mind that you have this little setting here that you will see in the component to allow people to take to take the authority and object probably in most cases when you want to grab it it's relevant and keep in mind that when you are in stand synchronization you have to have the authority and object to be able to change its properties including its position so that's why it is important and uh, many people forget to do it when they try to do things manually so i'm explaining to you uh, i just quickly i explained it to you before but in fusion if you want to do network change we have a callback where you should do this kind of changes fixed update network and for visual effect you have a callback call render so Keep in mind to do things at a proper place to be sure. In most cases, you, you can mix things a bit at start and it seems to work, but if you put it things in the proper place, everything will be much simpler for you. Um, I think it is the last one. Yes, one last thing, not specific to Fusion or Quantum or, or Tools. When you are starting to do multiplayer, if you have never done this before, keep in mind that the point of view of the user is very important because you seem to be on the same reality, but if you don't sync something, it will be different on each player's side. Sometimes it is fine if you have a local menu, things like that, but it is very easy the first time you work on multiplayer to forget this little detail. Things can be different on each other side. Maybe you want it, maybe you don't, and you simply have to check that and say, oh, I for of course, I forgot to sync this component, this position, this thing. And when you are using what we are doing, and if you keep in mind this, that we have two realities between each players, things will be quite simple for you. So before going to question, just to cover what we said here, when you will start your uh, project during the hackathon, take a few minutes to consider the proper uh, topology and SDK. If you are a beginner, if you are not sure, first, don't hesitate to contact us because we will be at the event and so on. But if you are not sure and you want to go fast and so on, you can start with Fusion in shared topology. For the hackathon, it will be probably something very relevant for you. And you saw that you, we have a lot of content for you. Don't hesitate to start with what we have. There's, these samples are made for you to start with them. You can include them in your product. There's no issue for that. It's planned and we hope that it will make you gain some time. It's fine to go with them. And we have plenty of add-ons to help you. They are here for that to, be, to allow you to prototype quickly and to have something that is up to speed in no time. And finally, Chris told this, Eric too, and I will repeat it. We are here to help. Don't worry, things can be very simple. You will take the sample and very quickly you have something where you can play with a friend in virtual reality. Ask questions to us on Discord or during the event and feel free to contact us anytime and we'll be able to, to discuss things with you. Uh, I don't know, Eric, did you see some questions that might be... Don't hesitate to ask questions now, but maybe Eric, you saw some questions. Uh, or if you want me to come back to a topic or if you... Don't hesitate to ask on the channel if it's relevant. So. Oh, I saw you already answered a lot of things, Eric. Perfect. <laughs> uh, did you notice yes, something? Yes, I answered. I don't know how many questions. I'm, I'm right now answering one more. So. And you have a bit of feeling of what we are doing at Photon. We keep doing this all day long to make sure that our customers yes. <laughs> can have even if you are doing a serious, a complex game with many questions, we can help you if needed. But for the hackathon, don't worry. Please test doing multiplayer. It's a delight to do these kind of things. Uh, did you notice something where people might have misunderstood or might have questions? No, it should. It seems all good. I'm just answering the last ones here. Perfect. Oh, let me fix sure this. No, so, uh, while we are requires, uh, I'm closing my microphone again. So, <laughs> you agree? Okay. Um, so again, do, don't hesitate to ask a question to us. Also, don't hesitate to ask questions about specific targets. 
for instance, here I spoke a lot about uh, virtual reality, but we also make samples for augmented reality. We made samples for the Vision OS. We can explain to you the limitation of the platform. I don't know if some of you will try to go this way during the event. I guess that in Europe, it probably won't be the case. But if you want, don't hesitate. We have made some samples for that. We know very well the limitation and capabilities of the platform. We can explain to you little details about the refresh rate of the skeleton bones and crazy things where we can help you on the impact on networking. Uh, and don't hesitate to use our website in addition to us directly. Uh, you will have, we will find in-depth documentation, in-depth explanation on the sample. The sample themselves try to, to be very simple for you to understand. And this way you can bootstrap something very quickly, but also we want to make sure that you understand everything so that you can succeed in what you are doing. Um, checking too if I don't see question. I think it's, uh, you did everything. I mean, like... There is one question from Zain. I mean, he ra Zain raised hand. So Zain, can you hear us? Do you have any question or? I, I so please, uh, Sebastian. So Ian Michel uh, from Köln uh, asked me something before and I did not have a complete answer about it. So if you can pick up the question about, is it possible to share the video stream of some user um, head mounted display of a network to another user, like telemetry scenarios? Okay. So um, I, I talked about screen sharing with photo and video, but I'm not sure what is the current status on samples on the actual rendering perspective, if it's possible to share that or not. So if you can comment on that. There's two parts of that. First, up to now, it, there was limited capabilities to capture the headset stream. So we have not made sample into this direction. But indeed, as you said, we have the Photon Video SDK. So the Photon Video SDK is, an, um, let's say, an upgraded version of the Photon Voice SDK. So with the Photon Voice SDK, you can use uh, our servers to synchronize voice. And with Photon Video SDK, you can do streaming. Clearly, you should not do streaming with Fusion or Quantum, it's, it's not done for that and it won't be efficient and problematic even. But with the Photon Video SDK allows this. We have made samples where we show how to uh, share uh, a desktop screen. But up to now, we didn't add the opportunity to test it on, uh, on devices because the capture was not possible. So the Hackathon would be a good uh, opportunity to test that, I think. But don't hesitate to ask us directly on the channel because I have to check that normally you should be able to do so, but clearly you will be in, in uncharted territories. We have not made the samples to help you, and clearly I fear that it would be a bit uh, costly regarding the time to develop this since you will be among the first one to, to do this. But theoretically, yes, it is possible. Simply, we have to bridge, in fact, the capture solution that you have to a uh, streaming tunnel that we have and honestly it should not be very long uh, but you would be the first one to do it on, uh, on a device so uh, relevant but ask us before if you have an idea and uh, we can maybe help a bit on that okay i'm done with the questions on the f and a here uh, uh, Ferran, there are a few questions which are not specific to multiplayer networking in general, so I left them unanswered to be picked up by the uh, the organizing team. If you, I think we need to we need to say answer live if um, because uh, we had to clean the questions for the next one. Uh, there is a Discord invite. Uh, our team can share the Discord invite now in a few minutes, uh, so uh, that will be great. And in addition Same to that, motion. Yeah. Uh, is there any Discord from your side? Or uh, I think let's do everything on Exarhek Notion. Uh, Notion yes. and Discord. So our team will our team will share the link there. Yes. Um, meeting recorded as well in Notion. You will find that in probably in the next few days. Uh, repeating code, I think you answered that probably because it's not related with us, I guess. 
So uh, let's call it answer live everything. So we will clean it up uh, and then ready for the next session. Um, Thank you. Uh, by the way, Zain, do you have any question? Uh, we, we, since you raised your hand, I'm giving you one more chance to ask your questions live. If not, um, okay, I think you yeah, missed. I was uh, I was answering the question about bandwidth here. Okay. So, but I somehow my answer was lost. But I'm gonna answer live then. So, um, anonymous user. So, um, always network properties. They are only transferred on change. Very efficiently compressed. Um, RPC calls are really not to be used unless you are requesting the authority to do something. So think about RPCs as input. It's just an input that you use occasionally to request either a server or another state authority in case of shared mode to do something on the object you cannot change yourself directly. But um, it's input, RPCs. You, you do always network properties. They're the most efficient thing that you can have. So uh, one more one more note for everyone here. Uh, we will open a channel, technical questions channel, um, like a category, and then under that channel, photon will be one category, which means that all photon team will be looking at that continuously. So if you will have any question, if you cannot find the photon team in person on the site, just break the glass and then post there. Uh, and you can even tag uh, the people here on Discord. Probably they are writing Photon in their Discord names. So you will be able to see who is from Photon. So you can directly reach out to them. Okay. So um, we will be at your service. And then supporting your Photon team is really uh, like uh, making this uh, as smooth as possible. So let's do a good job to create nice, interesting Photon powered projects, AI projects together. Okay. I'm really curious to see who will do the first XR plus AI plus uh, photon powered uh, project. That will be very interesting to see if someone bought to a network physics or at least like a using fusion plus AI and MR, I think, uh, yeah, it will be a perfect spotlight for everyone. So uh, I hope it was very helpful for everyone. We have to unfortunately go to the next session uh, they are on Discord. You can always ask questions on the Photon um, technical channel. Um, and then we can continue afterwards. Thank you again for Photon team becoming the global partner, supporting, joining almost like uh, the whole uh, top level team is here now. Uh, senior engineers are here. So we are really happy that you committed so much time for, for this. I hope that we will see the impact in the coming weeks. Um, this session is recorded. Now I will stop the session because we are entering another session. And um, so let me stop recording.